we are going to go over the top 10 mistakes that I believe people make in starting out with the microgreens. And uh, after that, we will get into a live Q&A if you stick around for that. So let's get into it. Uh, first thing is when people first start out, they go out and buy way too much equipment. They think they're going to be a million dollar business and they just buy way too much equipment. Too many trays, too many racks, too many lights, all of it. Too many seeds. Start small and build your business. So starting small and growing your business, this is where we started out. We started out with one rack and about 20 trays of a set, 20 tray sets. Um, and some trays for the tops uh, for weights and stuff. But this is where we started out. See, this rack is not even a four-foot rack. Uh, the lights hang over it. We started with two lights versus doing one that we do now. So, yeah, start with small. Buy the equipment small. Buy reused equipment. Um, this rack is, comes from a restaurant that we got for $50. Uh, so just something to put it on and start growing. Uh, so you start learning how to grow. So start small and grow with your business. Then take them profits and spend the money and build things. So, uh, so start small, grow your business, one to two racks. We did have two racks when we started, but we only grew on the one to start with. And uh, it worked great. And then we built up and we started buying more racks and more trays, more everything. But uh, And we do one light per shelf now. We did do two when we started because that's what we were told to do. It's what we learned. But one, one light per shelf works great. I'm a big believer in it. I think that's the way to go. It's going to save you money on power, on equipment, on the lights itself. So one light per shelf is my recommendation. Uh, light timers are great to have as the light timers um, is not necessary. You can turn them on and off, but these just set it automatically. You can set it up for the 16 hours and eight hours of uh, that and eight hours off. No trays. Uh, we are a big believer in uh, the bootstrap trays because they're going to last. You can buy the cheaper trays that you're going to replace them more often. These trays have got a life, uh, a one year guarantee on them and they will replace them if they crack or break or anything else. So a uh, big believer on bootstrap trays. And there's a link in the, all our videos on how to buy them. You can go there and buy them. Uh, I would appreciate that. And don't need to buy a bunch of stuff. You don't need the extra frills. You don't need the extra stuff. You just need to buy what you need to start and then grow with the business. So uh, number two mistake, uh, big believer in starting small, obviously. And people seem to start with too many varieties and want to do every microgreen variety there is, which there's hundreds of thousands, you know, there's tons of microgreens you could grow. But start with the easier ones and start with just a handful of them at most five to start with is my recommendation. So, and then, uh, so the top five, uh, four to five easy ones to grow and do the top five. These are my top five that I recommend to start with four. Mostly the fifth one is kind of the one I would do fifth, uh, if I knew better when I started. So first one, broccoli. One, everybody should be eating broccoli. Uh, it's very nutritious for you. We should all be eating broccoli microgreens. And it's an easy grow for the most part. And it's very, very easy and fast to grow. It grows totally in 10 days from point of seeding to harvest. Uh, we do get our broccoli from True Leaf Market. Uh, there's a link also for these down here. It is an affiliate link. But this is what we use. We use the Waltham 29. If you can get organic, if you can afford that, I would highly recommend doing the organic. It's just better. Uh, but start with what you can afford. Number two, radish. Uh, it's a very nice color radish. You see it gives a nice uh, red, pinkish stem. And, it, and another one that grows fast. This one actually can grow in about eight days. We do do a 10-day grow with it, but it can grow in about eight days. So... And we do get that also from True Leaf. Is the Triton Purple is what we use, and you get the nice, nice color on it. We get better color than this on ours. Uh, so, yeah, we do a little bit better than that, but we do a 10-day cycle with that as well. 
this actually peas you could probably start with these because these are easy to grow as well but i put them as three because this third for us uh, and we use a speckled pea uh we did do green peas didn't like them they were too tenderly and uh everybody likes the speckled peas just a little bit better and this uh grows amazingly in 10 days it says 8 to 14. i do not recommend going 14 days with them not not for the way we grow them uh because they are going to be crazy long and be falling over so 10 days is about the perfect time to harvest them uh and they don't get woody or anything like that at that point so highly recommend the 10 days as, a, as well and then a solid mix uh, we do a spicy the spicy solid mix this one here is the one that we do and but any kind of basic solid mix uh this is a little bit more mild this is the organic version obviously i would go with that if you can but people seem to like our spicy one so that's the one we grow we sell a ton of that in the grocery stores so uh another easy grow it's a, it's a 10 day grow and it grows great so highly recommend the spicy as well and then the fifth one is sunflowers and these burgers right here are the reason why they're on number five i don't i we started with sunflowers in the very beginning as our number one grow uh because that's you know what we learn to do that they are quick grow they grow in 10 days as well they will grow well if you use our method we got a video on that how we grow our sunflowers but definitely uh getting the seed hauls off can be a pain at the end but we get probably 90 percent of them off but you still have to go through them because not every seed sunflower is going to grow at the same rate you're gonna have some small ones big ones you still got to go through and sort it so it does take a lot of the big, longest time at harvest so that's the only reason why but it is a great product we use it in a lot of our mixes uh so definitely on the list but it's five for a reason and if anybody's here go ahead and say hi in the comments uh you know we'll we'll get to the live q a here shortly um we do get our sunflower seeds from reserve standard uh, they're out in on the west coast and uh, they deliver once a month, and they are great, great product. We have great, uh, great uh, success with these sunflowers. They grow well. We obviously buy in the 25 pounds. We currently still have 400 pounds of these because we buy in bulk when we buy everything to get the better price. And uh, they are great. Uh, we do have a video that we're probably going to put out shortly of how to go pick them up and everything else from that. But we did we did make a video of that as well. But them are my top five recommendations of what one to start with. Uh, starting with uh, two varieties is not good. Remember that. Start no more than five. Really start with one and get it down and then keep continue going is uh, what I would recommend. So growing the wrong type of crops. You don't want to start with the hard ones. Start with the easy five. But I see a lot of people that start with the sorrel and trying to figure out how to grow it. That's a very hard grow. Beets are a hard grow. And they take a little bit more special care. Cilantro uh, does pretty well. Um, we got that one down pretty good. But it does take some learning curve. And all these are longer grows as well. These are going to take 21 to 28 days on the growing. Uh, so that's definitely not something you want to do in the beginning. You want to get that in that 10-day grow. Hi, Jim. How are you today? See you there. Thanks for tuning in. And number three, growing the wrong crops. This is the two to three ones we just went over. You don't want to do them long crops when you first grow, and you want a quick, quick turnover. Seven days under lights. Eight to ten days is most. Five to seven days under lights. You want to turn that rack over every week because you want to get that money built up. Uh, if you're selling these right away, you want to get your money built up and get growing. And then when you get into six, eight, ten months down the road, start doing the ones that are longer, especially crops, and uh, get them going for uh, restaurants and stuff like that that want them. But don't, I do not recommend starting with the higher ones for sure. Hi, Heather. How are you tonight? Thanks for tuning in. Which path would you rather take here? Um, this is the path that we try to choose A to B straight line instead of squiggly lines and going crazy and racking your brain and, uh, this is where the frustration starts, and this is where people stop when they start frustration. They don't start with the easy and get your self-confidence up of going. So self-confidence helps you grow a business faster. So um, 
Number four mistake I find within germination, people don't do it long enough. They, you know, don't let that tray push up and everything else. They want to get them out of germination. They want to peak. They want to water during germination. Don't recommend any of that. You put them in germination, leave them alone for three to four days, and they're good. Don't water them. Don't miss them. Don't do any of that stuff. So you want to give them time to establish without peaking or watering. Uh, this is the root growth, obviously, here. So as they start and get rooted down, they root a little bit more, and they start pushing up. This is about the stage that you're going to get them out when they start pushing that tray up about here. So, And then, obviously, letting them grow the rest of the way. So, hi, Veronica. How are you tonight? Uh, this is a picture of the tray. These are radishes. They did have a, the weight on them here, and they're pushing up. This is what you want to see. And coming out the side, pushing that tray up, forcing that up. That's when they're ready to come out of germination. And everybody could be a little bit different, three, four days, uh, but, uh, depending on what your temperature and your growth area is like. Number five is making mistakes, making silly mistake for mold. So root hairs versus mold. These are not mold. These are root hairs. As you can see, they're off of one root, off of one stem. And it's hairy. So, you know, root hairs. Uh, this is what root hairs are going to look like. It's not going to be mold. New growers start freaking out sometimes with this. Uh, radishes are notorious to look like this when they first come out. So they're, they're these are root hairs. They're not, not fuzzy. So this is what mold looks like. So these are three different kinds of types of mold. They're spidery. They're not on a root. They're all through the tray. They're on the... the medium whatever medium you're growing in that's what root hairs are going to look like so mold usually looks like a spider web or cotton but also can be yellow spikes blue grayish colors round blobs it spreads and covers more area uh, all over the tray all over in a section that's when you're going to know that that is a uh, mold it needs to be treated cut out something along that lines so if you when you we water top water when you first come out of germination this is a water test this is also to look for mold as well. You gently water the top. If it looks fuzzy, looks disappear, them are root hairs. If it's still there, still clumped up, that is going to be the mold. So you're going to need to take care of, get rid of the tray, treat, whatever you need to do at that point. Water twice a day is not a scalable. Water once a day, water every 24 hours. They are good as long as you give them enough water. So make sure you're not watering twice a day and scale to who wants to work twice a, twice a day watering? Nobody. So not me anyway. I do not recommend that. Once a day will be good as long as you give them enough water. And watering number seven is watering before harvest. So you don't want to water within 24 hours of harvesting. So the day the morning of definitely don't water. The day before you want to water in the morning if you're going to harvest in the morning the next day, because if you pack them wet. They will look like this, and they will look horrible. And, yes, I have seen these in grocery stores on some other microgreens growers, and they look horrible. So make sure you're harvesting dry so they don't look like this. You don't need to put a paper towel or absorber in the package then. Like I said, 24-hour days within harvest, don't, don't water. Uh, losing track of time. You know, uh, how long have they been in germination? I don't know. When did you put them in there? I don't, you know. So making sure you're staying on track on time, forgetting when the crop was planted will give you inconsistent results because if you get them out of germination too late, that's where you're going to get some mold. If you leave them in too little, then you're not going to have the right growth. So you want to make sure that you're planning your crops. Keep records and consistent schedules. This is why we now, versus using spreadsheets, that we use um, seed leaf, which I did a review on that. You can check out. And we're loving that program, and they keep on adding more and more stuff to it. So, uh, number nine, growing too much. So, make sure that growing and knowing what you need to grow and what you're planting, that's why you need to plan your crops. So, what are you selling? What are you eating yourself? Don't grow too much. So, self, but make sure you're trying all your products. Make sure you know what they taste like. So, when people ask, uh, building a business with samples is the best way to build this business is sample, sample, samples. So, and then start selling. Uh, this is a picture of ours in a grocery store. This is one of the newer grocery stores we got into. They're starting with four varieties. I plan on them probably expanding, but 
and then sell. So but knowing what you're selling. Uh, growing too long as well here. So you don't want to grow too long. Uh, that gets, you know, you get the true leaves. It gets bitter. It doesn't taste right. So you got, that's also why you want to test to make sure that it still tastes good at what level and getting the biggest yield. So, so overgrowing changes your quality and your taste. So when you get them too long, like sunflowers, especially if they get a true leaf in the middle there, they are going to taste bitter. Uh, you don't want to sell them. So you want to taste your product and make sure that it's good. So knowing when it was planted and when it should be harvested, again, using a program or a sheet or spreadsheet or write it down somewhere is uh, definitely something you want to do. Um, whether it's sold or not, it needs to be harvested on time. So if it's supposed to be harvested on that time and it's not going to taste good, go ahead and harvest it and give it out as free samples, either yourself, give it away to your family, donate it, whatever. Don't let it go overgrow. Uh, so again, Give consistent products. You give consistent products out. People get the taste. The consistent products all the time. That's when you get your repeat customers and you grow your business. So, put in the comments uh, what mistake have you made uh, with growing microgreens and starting out? What mistakes have you made? What mistakes have you avoided? Uh, something that you wish you would have known before you got started. Uh, put that in the comments. Uh, ask questions. Uh, 